All right. Well, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. I am Elizabeth Bagley, the Director of Library Services, and I'm joined by my colleague in McCain Library, Casey Long, and Olivia Bagala, who um, is a Democracy Fellow in the Hudson Center for Leadership and Service. And we are um, offering these ideas of ways to check your voter status and think about how you maybe assess um, issues and candidates in your local area. So, um, and Roosevelt, maybe you could say in the chat if you're in um, Georgia or another state. Um, but we wanted to, as I said, to offer some tools to help you and um, we, the library blog also did just post a list of some books that relate to voting if you're interested, maybe after exams are over with um, any further exploration of the voting process. So if you are um, concerned about whether you are registered to vote or not sure if you're able to vote or where your polling place is, um, these are some, the, the US Gov site will show you um, where to look for your state. Here, um, you can just drill down um, to your, either your local county office or your state maybe your Secretary of State's office that, um, that deals with that. And let's see, I'm sorry, I need to move this to get back to our correct view here. Sorry. Um, and some of you may have already voted um, absentee and this ballot track site will show you if your ballot has been accepted and recorded, which obviously is a very big concern right now. And I'm going to turn this over next to Olivia. Okay, let me share my screen. Let me, um, I need to stop sharing. I think. No, there you go. All right, can you guys see that? Great. Okay, so um, basically, I'm just going to be presenting how to find who's on your ballot by just showing a few sources that have worked for um, me and some other people. So first, um, Ballotpedia is a really popular one. Um, and this one is for every state. So it's no matter where you live, you can use this. Um, it'll load. Okay. So basically, you just put in your street name. So I'm going to be, and then you put in your city and your state, and then you just press view your ballot. Um, and then you click on the election. And then here you have all of your amendments, um, like literally everything that is going to be on your specific ballot because everybody's ballot is different. Um, so I have like Florida Supreme Court, State Senate District, everything that, because there's a lot more than president on your ballot, obviously. So it, sometimes it's difficult to, um, you know, figure out, you know, who you're voting for because you're like, what's going to be on my ballot? Because <laughs> we hear a lot about president and not about a lot of other things. Um, but here is another site I wanted to share. If you live in Georgia, this is helpful. So if you, um, it's basically, um, it um, just, it educates you about sheriff, district attorney, and solicitor in all 159 counties in Georgia. So if you're like, who am I voting for, for these three things, this is a really good site um, because it shows you, you know, sheriff responses, district attorney responses, solicitor responses. So it asks them all like similar questions um, relating to their job. So that's a really, um, that's a good source as well. Um, and then next is this link right here, which I am not registered in Georgia. So I had um, someone else do this for me, but oh, let me see if I can get it to play. Here we go. So this just shows you. I don't see an app for that. Oh. You'll need to do. Sorry, I guess my Siri heard me <laughs> talk. Um, but yeah, so it's going, so they put in their name, county, date of birth, and this is just another way to see your ballot. Um, your, so you click there for sample ballots, 
and there you go. So those are three really good sources. Two are specifically for Georgia, but there's the one that, because I'm in Florida, I usually use Ballotpedia. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna turn it back over to Liz. And I just wanted to chime in about Olivia's site that she just did of the My Georgia Voter. Sorry to interrupt, but that, that is the what Liz has shown before. That's one of the excellent tools to look at um, on the Secretary of State site that will help you tell it whether your registration is correct. Because I did go to vote one day and um, they said that I had a different polling location and it was how I learned that I had identity theft. So it can happen that if you don't check your voter status that you might have had something change. And that my voter page in Georgia will also show you if you're voting early if and when your ballot has been accepted. So that's another good place to look. And as you're assessing candidates, um, we wanted to offer a couple of ideas for how to do that. Um, em Emily's list is one that does have a slightly um, skewed focus on pro-choice Democratic women candidates, but it's a highly respected national source that's been around a long time, if that is the way you're leaning. Um, the League of Women Voters is nonpartisan and has been around 100 years. It was founded by women leaders of the women's suffrage movement, and the uh, Vote 411 site will um, have a lot of things to do with voter education, as well as um, some candidate bios. And the Vote USA also has nonpartisan candidate comparisons and talks about issues that are of national importance. So those are all ones that we recommend. Let's see here. For some reason that doesn't want to advance. There we go. Oops, I'm going too far. Um, sorry. I don't know why. Oh, I think. Am I sharing the screen? Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Yes. Yeah. Right. Let me stop sharing and then you go. <laughs> you can just advance, whatever. Yeah. I was um, like, I feel like. <laughs> okay. We may need to get back to where you had stopped here. Let's yeah. See. There we go. <laughs> okay. Sorry. We get caught up here. Um, so if you were wondering, whoa, sorry, I went way too far here. Um, so if you're wondering about people's voting records, um, if they are currently serving in the US Congress, um, the congressional record is the place where um, official votes are recorded. Not all votes are always recorded and there are several different kinds of votes, the, the voice vote, the roll call vote. Um, these sites will explain those if you're interested, but, um, and the senate.gov site will also show you a little about those various votes, but um, I found this one, the um, campus elect. That's sorry, that doesn't want to. There we go. This is another voter education nonpartisan site, and if you scroll to candidate and issue guides here. It has a breakdown by, um, again, by state. And in Georgia, both of our Senate seats are up for election this year. So for example, this Georgia Senate one guide has a nice side-by-side -side rundown of the two major candidates um, and where they have stated their positions on things like climate change and the Supreme Court and COVID response. So that is a nice one. Uh, again, that's campuselect.org. And the Vote Smart one uh, covers the Georgia General Assembly at our state level and also has other states covered. And this offers, you can put in any politician's name or your zip code here, and it will show you something about the person's biography, the history of their past votes, um, and also a glimpse of where they're campaign funding is coming from, which sometimes can be a good thing to pay attention to. And let's see. Obviously the, whoa, 
Oh, sorry. I don't know why these keep going ahead. Apologies. Um, the library does provide access to newspaper databases. So um, if you're interested in some past news coverage, if you go to the library homepage, which is agnescott.edu slash library, and then our A to Z database list and um, letter N, there are three databases there. News and newspapers is an index for the Atlanta Journal Constitution, the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, and some um, ones out, papers outside the US as well. And the newspaper source will cover national papers like the Boston Globe, the San Francisco Chronicle, as well as some um, media sites like CNN, ABC, um, National Public Radio transcripts. So if you were looking for a particular name and a particular issue, that would be another way to see someone's statements from, from past. And the Nexus Uni database on that same end menu um, tracks legislation. So if there's a particular interest you have in a legislative piece that's going through Congress, um, that will send you alerts when there's news about a committee vote or um, a roll call or those sorts of things. So um, if you are thinking about some more questions down the road, uh, these are ways that the library can help you anytime you see this little green light on our chat service. That means someone is, is staffing our chat service and we can point you to any quick resources that you might need. Or you can email us at library, our library at agnescott.edu. And um, we also have the option to set up a research appointment if you're, um, for example, writing a paper on the political science issue. We're happy to meet with you about that. And I wanted to um, be sure you're aware that, well, I apologize. I don't know why these keep advancing on their own. Um, there are some. Um, events that are of interest next week that are happening by various departments on campus. So um, just wanted to make you aware there is a, a watch party for election results and a post-election debrief, for example, uh, and a film screen about voting rights and um, some other programs there. So we have now got question and answer time. If anybody would like to ask any questions. Olivia provided us whoops, with that quick graphic. If you'd like to unmute yourself and ask questions, you're more than welcome. I've got a quick 